Forbes, one of the most credible and, and reliable media outlets out there, is one of the most coveted magazines for celebrities, artists, entrepreneurs, and companies. Everybody wants to be featured in Forbes. They also have put at least five of the biggest, I mean, questionable entrepreneurs in the history of modern day business on the cover. Charlie Javis, Elizabeth Holmes, Sam Bankman Freed, Martin Shkreli, and Adam Newman. Four of these people have been convicted for their business practices. Forbes has an incredible track record. Charlie Javis. Frank is a software aimed at improving the student loan application process for young Americans seeking financial aid. It was founded by Charlie Javis. Her vision was to build the Amazon for higher education. Claiming to have 4.65 million users, JP Morgan bought it for $175 million. According to court filings, when JP Morgan asked for proof during due diligence, Javis allegedly created a list of names, addresses, date of births, and other personal information for 4.265 million students who didn't actually exist. According to the suit, Frank had fewer than 300,000 customer accounts at the time. To date, Charlie Javis maintains that J.P. Morgan knew what they were buying from the beginning, but rushed into the deal. She's been indicted, and she's out on a $2 million bail. She currently resides in Miami, where she bought a $1.2 million condo. Good for her. Elizabeth Holmes. Everybody knows this. Elizabeth Holmes is the founder of the defunct blood testing startup Theranos. Theranos was a blood testing technology that supposedly required only one vial of blood to conduct 240 tests, ranging from cholesterol levels to complex genetic analysis. Theranos would be revolutionized, could have revolutionized medicine, and it saved lives around the world. That was the idea. Until John Carreau, twice Pulitzer Prize winning journalist of the Wall Street Journal, received a tip about potential fraud. Former Theranos employees like Erica Jung and Tyler Schultz served as whistleblowers. They revealed lies to board members, a culture of intimidation and secrecy, and technology that repeatedly failed quality assurance and crucially results to real patients that were fundamentally incorrect. And it didn't have the life-changing medical decisions that, that it said it could. In January 2022, Holmes was found guilty on four charges of defrauding investors. And in November, she was sentenced to over 11 years in prison. She later asked by a federal judge to delay the start of her prison sentence while she appeals the fraud case in part citing her two young children, one of which was a newborn. Gregory Coleman, the retired FBI special agent who brought down the so-called Wolf of Wall Street, thinks Holmes possesses many psychopathic tendencies. He said Holmes was cold, nasty, narcissistic, and manipulative person who is incapable of telling the truth. He even said that while having a baby on the eve of her trial, knowing that if she got convicted, she would face significant jail time, was just the latest line of selfish, manipulative, psychotic acts. Coleman said that Javis, by comparison, is very driven, very well-spoken, and maybe not at all nice, but normal for the part. Coleman thinks the stories Javis told grew so large and widespread that she lost control of them. These sort of criminals tend to be optimists who overestimate the chance of things getting better, like a gambler. Sam Bankman Freed. Sam Bankman Freed, founder of FTX, who was included on Forbes 30 under 30 list in 2021, and was on the cover of the Forbes 400 issue. Bankman Freed is currently under house arrest while awaiting trial on charges that he mismanaged and pocketed billions of dollars. Adam Newman. Forbes also placed WeWork founder Adam Newman on its cover before its public downfall. Many said it's easy to understand why. He was a rock star. Newman's tall frame and long hair were starting points. His personality made him very interesting. He refused meat, walked around barefoot, smoked weed, loved tequila, Study Kabbalah and was cousin to Gwyneth Paltrow through marriage. Newman had a big vision. Rather than just renting desks, he wanted to encompass all aspects of people's lives in both the physical and digital world. He wanted to expand residential housing and education. He envisioned we sleep to we sail to we bank. Based on what we know, it's not just a real, it's not a realistic vision. Its failure was inevitable. His valuation was based on a market side that included all office workers even those who worked for a company with an existing office. When they went public, it fell by more than half. The eccentric behavior that attracted so much free media to Newman to start become a liability to his actual investors. The biggest scandal was also his self-dealing. He rented an office space under his own name and then rented it to WeWork. He was getting paid twice. Forbes also named Silicon Valley Bank as one of the America's best banks 
just a few days before it collapsed. Don't bother looking for it though, they already removed it. Martin Screlly, a former CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals, was named to the list in 2012. Screlly became infamous in 2015 after jacking up the price of a single pill of a pres prescription drug, Daraprim, from $13.50 to $750 while serving as CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals. He was later sentenced to seven years in prison. Forbes has brushed aside the side comments going their way. They said that Forbes list captured some of those prominent people and companies that have had a profound impact at the time of publication, but when the new details are discovered, they report it uh, promptly. They aren't wrong. Forbes has had more hits than misses. Also, all media outlets have mistakes. No entity has it 100% right. The only, this video only serves to hopefully teach us a lesson that we cannot count on publications or media companies no matter how seemingly big they are in determining which businesses people are legit and which ones are frauds. Just because a company hits the cover of Forbes or wins an award or gets endorsed by someone prominent doesn't mean they're a good company and it doesn't make them a perfect fit. If you know of other financial scandals and notable events about entrepreneurs, new businesses, and new technologies, share them in the comments section below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Colin Plume, CEO of Noble Gold Investments.